trial in Abuja of a journalist charged under Nigeria's Cyber Crime Act is coming under criticism from media advocates. For VOA, Timothy Obiezu reports from Abuja. At Nigeria's Federal High Court in Abuja, hearings in the case of journalist Saint Miempamo Onisha are on the way. The founder of the online broadcaster, Niger Life TV, is accused of cyber stalking and defamation. Police arrested Miempamo in his hometown in Bayelsa State early last month and the journalist remains in custody. Authorities say the journalist in September deliberately published a false and unverified report on Facebook accusing officials of the Presidential Amnesty Program or PAP of beating a beneficiary to death. The PAP is a government-sponsored scheme that offers monthly stipends to former oil militants as part of efforts to end violence in the Niger Delta. Officials deny that anyone was killed. They say that when a beneficiary tried to force his way into the office, security resisted him. The person went to a hospital and was later discharged. Anande Terungwa is a lawyer representing Miempamo. He says that the journalist has pleaded not guilty and that he removed his report, published a corrected story, and issued an apology. Terungwa, who visited Miempamo in jail Monday, told VOA he suspects the case may be politically motivated. The journalist covers the amnesty program, unrest in Niger Delta, and in 2020 faced legal action over his coronavirus coverage. They have been turning us around, playing politics. He was charged with three count charge, actually. Many people have published something related to that. So how many people have they arrested? How many people have they tried? How many people have they, they just singled, singled him out. Nigeria's Justice Ministry did not respond to VOA's requests for comment. Nigerian lawmakers enacted the cybercrime law in 2015 to protect its economy and prevent fraud and cyber attacks. But analysts say the legislation is used too often by authorities to prosecute journalists and that Nigerian media are often targeted with arrest and legal cases over their work. The Committee to Protect Journalists, or CPJ, has repeatedly documented the use of Nigeria's Cyber Crimes Act to prosecute journalists. Jonathan Rosen is a senior researcher at the New York-based nonprofit. We are constantly keeping track of attacks on the press, jailing of journalists, killing of journalists, surveillance, uh, laws that are going to inhibit the press. We're constantly keeping track of those incidents and reporting them, uh, documenting them, to provide an evidence base for our advocacy with governments. The Cybercrime Act and, and legislation around criminal defamation in Nigeria have been used repeatedly to jail journalists, to arrest journalists in connection with their work. CPJ is calling for the swift release of the journalists and for reform, says Rosen. We have called consistently, of course, along for the release of journalists that are jailed using this legislation for Nigerian lawmakers, leadership in Nigeria to reform these laws to ensure that the press do not have to worry about being jailed in connection with their work, to ensure that these tools that are used to criminalize journalism are not uh, available in Nigeria. Miam Pamo is back in court on December 4th. If convicted, he faces up to 10 years in prison or a fine of more than $32,000. For now, his lawyer says the priority is to get me and Pamo out of jail. Timothy Obiezu, VOA News, Abuja, Nigeria. Internally displaced persons or IDPs in Abuja, Nigeria, accuse the government of abandoning them, saying they lack portable water, toilets, clinics, food, and schools. Our reporter in Abuja has more after visiting IDP camps. Internally displaced persons settled in camps in Abuja say they still lack the most basic amenities a full 10 years after the camps were established. Most of the displaced people are from Yobe, Bornu, and Adamawa states. The fled violence from the Boko Haram insurgents. Many say they struggle to have enough to eat daily. Leatu Ayuba is the women leader at the IDP camp in the Durumi district and the coordinator for 18 camps. 
She tells VOA they only hear promises from government officials and agencies without action. We are telling them that we people, we have tired. Ayuba says they have been telling officials they are tired of the way they are treated, sitting in the camp day after day with no help from the government. She says the government should find an area or city where they can leave and start a new life. At the Durumi camp, women sit on the floor of an abandoned clinic while children clad in dirty and torn oversized clothes run about. Some men have gone out to find work, but the older men sit under a big tree. The people at the camp say health conditions are worsening because of the unhygienic environment and lack of portable water. They say they are refused treatment in hospitals because they don't have the money to pay or don't have authorization letters from the government agencies responsible for displaced persons. A volunteer and nurse at the Area 1 camp in Abuja, Issa Umar, spoke to VOA about the situation. He said the lack of adequate food and water means malnutrition, malaria, typhoid and other diseases are common. So the time when I came back from uh, Goza to... When he started from Goza, Borno State, he discovered his people in the camp needed help with their health issues as there were no drugs or hospital for them. Omar says that's why he volunteered to help them. He sees them complaining of cough, diarrhea, fever and so on and he tells them what drugs to buy outside. To buy it outside. Omar says the camps survive mostly on support from individuals, non-governmental organizations and religious bodies. Emmanuel Ongubiko, the national coordinator of the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, says it is time the government addresses the concern of IDPs. IDPs are actually citizens of this country who, by no fault of theirs, have found themselves as internally displaced persons and largely government is responsible for their plight. The primary duty of government, according to Section 14 to b is to ensure that there is security of life and property in the country, and the, the government has failed. The Federal Capital Territory Administration, which manages Abuja City, denied the allegations over neglect. They would not comment directly, but pointed out the policy that mandates that IDPs be protected. For VOA News. The leader of a rebel group in Uganda was charged on Monday with terrorism and murder following the fatal attack on two foreign tourists and their driver by an armed commando in a national park last month. Abdul Rashid Choto, alias Sinjovu, a leader of Allied Democratic Forces rebel group, had been arrested in early November during a Ugandan army operation against the commando group accused of killing a British and a South African honeymooner and their guide in Queen Elizabeth National Park on October 17. The attack was claimed by the Islamic State group to which the ADF rebels have pledged allegiance. Jovo is also blamed by the authorities for a school massacre in June which left 42 people dead, mainly students. Abdul Rashid Choto has been charged with terrorism, murder, aggravated robbery and membership of a terrorist organization as part of the investigation into the attack in the national park, the public prosecutor's office said in a statement on Monday. According to the prosecutor's office, Njovu was arrested on Lake Edward, which lies on the border between Uganda and Democratic Republic of Congo. Two other members of the commando were killed while the others managed to escape by boat. The army had previously indicated that Njovu was the only survivor of the seven-member commando. Originally, Ugandan rebels with a Muslim majority, the ADF made their home in eastern DRC in the 1990s. In 2019, they pledged allegiance to the EL which claims responsibility for some of their actions and presents them as its Central African province. 
They are accused of having massacred thousands of civilians in the DRC in recent years and carrying out jihadist attack on Ugandan soil. Following the attack on October 17th, President Yoweli Museveni called on the security forces to annihilate the IDF rebels. The army subsequently carried out several air raids against its positions in the DRC. This murder is one of Uganda's most famous sparks, sparked fears in the tourism sector, which contributed almost 10% of the country's GDP last year, according to official figures.